Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1511. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to get the low bid for offers when the delivery time is less than 20 weeks. And we're going to use an array formula. And here's a picture of the array formula. It looks like we have one, two, three different conditions we need to consider before finding the min value. But the real problem for this formula is that we have a non-proper data set. Bad data sets means that we have a much harder time solving the problem. If we go over to the sheet Good Data, this is the data set we have. And look what we have to do. Here's item one, but look at this, vendor one, two, three, four, and five. We somehow have to pick out from these UP dollar sign amounts which one is the smallest based on the weeks. And for us to pick a corresponding number from the UP dollar sign area, that weeks has to be less than whatever hurdle we put here, in our case, 20 weeks. That means for item number two, if we're asking the question of the weeks column, how many of you are less than 20? That means we would have, for vendor 5, we need to look at that number. For vendor 4, because 10 is less than 20, I need to look at that number. Vendor 3, that's less than 20, so I have to look at that number. Same with vendor 2, because 12 is less than 20. That would be the only number excluded. Now, the problem is that all of these numbers are in the same record. That makes it hard to access the weeks as a condition or criteria and then jump back to to get the actual number. What we really need is a proper data set. Part number quantity, just like here. Then vendor, they shouldn't be up here. They should be in their own column. Then we should have one, two, three columns for UP dollar sign this column and weeks. Then we could simply ask the question for a calculation. Hey, make sure we get the records for vendor 1, then look through the weeks less than 20, greater than or equal to 0, and then please pick out the corresponding numbers and give me the min. But that's not what we have. We have this bad data set, and we're stuck with it. So let's go over to 511. Now here's the same data set we just looked at, but it has all of the records. And we're going to build our formula right here. Now, I want to make this a little bit smaller so it's easier to see. So I'm going to highlight column I to N and right click, hide those columns. Now in cell T3, we're going to build a formula that we can copy down. And we'll always pick out the lowest dollar amount as long as the corresponding weeks are less than our hurdle of 20. Now we're going to start off with the min function equals min. Again, I can't just highlight all the numbers, A, because it doesn't have the numbers with weeks less than 20. And there's lots of extra numbers there. So in number one argument, we're going to have to build a string of if functions to filter out just the values we want for this row. I'm going to start with the if function, the logical test argument. Now, normally we put one cell and compare it to another cell. But we're actually going to have to compare a whole range of values. So this will make this an array formula. Now, the problem with highlighting this range right here is if I ask the question, hey, look at the weeks column. Well, this is an array that has 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on elements. So if I get a true, it will be in the third position. And I actually need that true to be in the first position because the number I need to pick out is from the up column, which when I highlight the numbers from this row, that will be in the first position. And then for vendor number two, this week's is in the sixth position. But if I get a true there, I really need the fourth position. So watch this. Here's the whole trick to this formula is I'm going to highlight from the first weeks all the way to the last one. But because I didn't highlight the first two cells, I'm going to highlight two cells beyond. That way, that range that I highlighted 
has the same dimensions as when we highlight the actual numbers. Now that range needs to be locked, so I hit the F4 key. And then I ask the question, how many of you are equal to, and I'm going to hard code the field name WKS in double quotes. Now I'm going to hard code that in because we're going to assume that those are not going to change. Now let's look at this. This is an array operation. And the reason why is there's some operator. And on either side, there are not just single values. That's a whole range of values. So when I evaluate this by clicking on Logical Test, whoops, look at that. It didn't highlight everything. So now I'm going to position my I-beam, hold Shift, click to highlight everything, because I want to evaluate this and look at the resultant array. So when I hit the F9 key, that's the evaluation key, look at that, an array of trues and falses. That means in position 1 and 4, it found weeks. Now you can always tell that you're doing an array formula, because when you evaluate a particular operation, if it results in more than one value, you know that you've made an array operation. Now be sure to Control Z to undo that, because that's only our first condition, comma. We have two more conditions, so we can't put the value of true. We have to put another if, if. Now, for the logical test, we're going to make another array operation, but this time on the numbers, because we need to pick out the weeks less than 20. Because the two dimensions have to be the same, I highlight two cells after because I left out the first two cells at the beginning. Now that's a relative cell reference. And I ask the question, how many of you are less than? And now I'm going to use my right arrow key to get the weeks hurdle. In that cell, V3 is 20. I need to lock that with the F4 key. Notice, because that formula element can change, we put it into a cell and labeled it. That's a proper formula element following Excel's golden rule. Now that won't be enough, because we have some empty cells in this column of weeks, and empty cells evaluate to 0. So if I ask, are you less than 20, well, of course, that'll come out true, and I need to exclude it. So comma, now we have our third if, if. The same range, two cells passed as a relative cell reference, are you greater than 0? Now we have one, two, three ifs. Again, to remind you, if I highlight just this one array operation and hit F9, it gives me a resultant array of trues and falses. Now there's going to be one, two, three resultant arrays. All of them will be evaluated against each other. Only when there's three trues, one, two, three, all in the same relative position, will the result of all of those ifs deliver a true. Control Z. And that's important, because only when all three tests are passed do we want to comma put in the values if true. And this is where we highlight the actual range of numbers. Not two passed, but the first two, including the first one with weeks for our first three ranges. That's a relative cell reference. Now we want to make sure, and I do not want to comma and put anything here. So I'm going to backspace. Very important when you're doing a min calculation. Leave value if false out, because if you leave this argument empty, it will insert a false into the resultant array. And that's important for min. If we had actually multiplied these arrays, we would have resulted in zeros when all three tests are not passed. And zero, of course, would be used by min. So by leaving that argument off and simply close parentheses one, two, three times, I'm noticing the orange one is matched up with the orange of the first if. Now I can click number one and watch this. It will evaluate our three tests and only pick out the number from that range. So when I hit F9, there it is, a bunch of falses, which min is programmed to ignore, and our number. Now for this first record, there's only one number. But as we copy down, we will see that there's sometimes that there's multiple numbers, because all the conditions were passed for more than one bid. That's where the min will pick out the lowest bid. Control-Z 
Now I simply close parentheses. Now let's see what happens when we hit Enter. We get a value error, because this is an array formula, F2. And although there are five functions in Excel of the 450 functions that can handle array operations without special keystrokes, when we're using the if logical test or the min, these functions cannot automatically handle array calculations. So we have to tell Excel that this is an array formula with array calculations. And the way you do that is you use Control-Shift and Enter. If you use just Enter or just Control-Enter, it will not work. Now as soon as you do Control-Shift-Enter, go up to the formula bar and verify that those curly brackets are put in. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you it understood that this was an array formula. So you do Control-Shift-Enter to tell Excel, and Excel puts these curly brackets to tell you it understood. Now we can simply double click and send it down. If I go to the bottom, I can see there's one that didn't quite make it, so I'm going to copy it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. I want to verify that all of the cell references are working. And it looks like they are. Now be careful. Remember, I put this in edit mode. This is an array formula. So if I accidentally hit Enter, I didn't enter this array formula correctly. So F2, when you put it in edit mode, be sure to use Control-Shift-Enter. Now if you remember, when you hit F2 to put it in edit mode, you can click Escape if you've already entered the formula. And it will revert back to what was there before you put it in edit mode. Control up arrow. Now if we go down to the fourth record, F2, and I'm going to click inside a min, click on number one, and F9. The three logical tests here delivered one, two, three, actually four different bids. So then the min could look through and pick out the smallest one. Now I'm going to use Escape here. Now this formula actually works in any version in Excel. If you have Excel 2010, F2, you can actually use the aggregate function. And it doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. It gets even better if you have Office 365, because F2, you can use the min ifs. And that's not even an array formula. You just put it in, Enter, and copy it down. By the way, aggregate F2 is an array formula, but this is one of those special functions. There's only five of them that have an argument that can automatically handle array operations without that special keystroke. If you want to learn about these different formulas, I have a great video that covers the entire history of all the different ways we do min and max calculations with conditions or criteria. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank you.